Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6. The Ark of Safety. Genesis chapter 6, beginning with, oh, let's start with verse 12. Genesis 6, beginning with verse 12. God looked on the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted their way upon the earth. Then God said to Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence because of them. And behold, I am about to destroy them with the earth. Make for yourself an ark of gopher wood. You shall make the ark with rooms and shall cover it inside and out with pitch. This is how you shall make it. The length of the ark, 300 cubits. Its breadth, 50 cubits. Its height, 30 cubits. You shall make a window for the ark and finish it to a cubit from the top and set the door of the ark in the side of it. You shall make it with lower, second, and third decks. Behold, I, even I, am bringing the flood of water upon the earth to destroy all flesh in which is the breath of life from under heaven. Everything that is on the earth shall perish. But I will establish my covenant with you and you shall enter the ark, you and your sons and your wife and your sons' wives with you. And of every living thing of all flesh, you shall bring two of every kind into the ark to keep them alive with you. They shall be male and female. Of the birds after their kind and of the animals after their kind, of every creeping thing of the ground after its kind, two of every kind will come to you to keep them alive. As for you, take for yourself some of all food which is edible and gather it to yourself and it shall be for food for you and for them. Thus Noah did according to all that God had commanded him, so he did. Then the Lord said, Noah, enter the ark, you and all your household, for you alone I have seen to be righteous before me in this time. Wow. Good thing God told Moses to put male and female on the ark. It would be more. If he'd put male and male, as many in our society today would have been, the world wouldn't have lasted very long. Amen. But we know if we continue to read the story that just as God promised, the flood came. Judgment failed. And undoubtedly, for those who refused to listen, it was an unexpected horror. Do you understand that God has promised that one day judgment will fall once again upon this entire planet? He said it will not be in the form of a flood next time. <clears throat> For God promised that he will not destroy the earth by flooding it, but Peter said God will destroy it by fire. The Bible says that judgment will again one day fall. And by the signs of the times, that judgment is not very far off, folks. It will come in an unexpected hour, unexpected day, unexpected moment. 
moment. And it will be too late then for people to cry out to God. Jesus said in that day people will be busy carrying on their everyday activities. Oblivious to the pending doom that is about to fall upon them. God has forewarned. God has foretold man about the future. You don't have to go to the psychic to get a future reading, folks. It's all right here. Amen. You want to know what's going to happen in the future? Read this book. It's all here from the beginning to the end. That's a lot of work, though, isn't it? Easy to go down here and play, pay some clown $30 for five minutes to tell you a lie. Easy to open up the paper every day and look at your horoscope uh, and believe that lie. They're living every day, going about their normal activities, oblivious to what is about to happen. The Bible says they will be caught off guard. Judgment will fall. God has pronounced judgment upon sin. Good news is He provided a way out. Just as He provided Noah and Noah's family a way out via the ark, God has provided you and I a way out Amen. via Jesus Christ. A window of grace to escape the coming judgment. The Bible says one day that window of grace will be shut just like the door of the ark was shut on that day, God closed it Himself. And those who were not in the ark of safety met their doom when judgment fell. A 99-year-old woman was dying one night with her husband by her side. Her breath had become short. Suddenly she gained a little strength and she said to her husband, It is dark. She said, Is it night? And her husband responded to her and he said, Oh yes, it's midnight. The dying woman went on to say to her husband, are all the children in. She, in her mind, she had returned to the past. She had gone back in the years of a marriage and she was concerned about her children being in for the night. She wanted to make sure they were safe and secure because she knew that the late hours of darkness brought trouble, was dangerous. You discovered that we're living in dangerous times yet, folks? Amen. Exactly. The night is approaching and the church needs to be sounding forth the message. It's almost midnight. My message to you this morning simply says judgment day is approaching. Judgment day is approaching and we need to be calling men to Christ. 
the main point of the message, judgment day is approaching. We need to be busy calling men to Christ. The first point I want you to understand is that many will refuse to hear it. Many will refuse to hear it. Some today around this world still refuse to believe that the flood of Noah's day ever happened, folks. They deny it. Some folk refuse to believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross. The reality of it is many are just not going to believe the things of God. The Bible says that the world was evil and corrupt in Noah's day. God came to Noah with a message of judgment and salvation. That message has not changed. God's message to man is still judgment and salvation. Can't have one without the other. Due to sin, God said to Noah, that the world would be destroyed. God would provide a way out for who? For those who would listen and obey. Those who would listen and obey. The Bible says that man's imagination in the day of Noah was continually bent on evil. What's that remind you of? Even today. It was bent on evil. His heart was set on evil. The only thing he could think about was sin. God's heart was literally grieved by the wickedness of man. Corruption and violence had become a way of the earth. Think just about, we're just about there ourselves today, folks. Corruption and wickedness is swallowing up the world that you and I live in moment by moment. It's like the world has fallen into a cesspool of quicksand, slowly sinking, slowly sinking, deeper and deeper into the mind didn't get this way overnight. God created Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve fell and began to produce children. And the population grew and grew and grew. And as population grew, men became more and more and more wicked and evil. You see, sin is like a cancer. It progresses. Sin is like a snowball rolling downhill that gathers snow and gets larger and larger until it reaches the bottom of the hill. The world is like a snowball, folks, rolling downhill and its day of judgment has already been set in stone. Sin is progressive in its destructiveness. God warned Noah that judgment was coming. Noah went forth with the message that God had given to him and man was given the opportunity to receive or reject that message. What was their response? What was the response to Noah? What was the response to the message that God had given Noah in his day. Oh, why the atheists, we still have them, don't we? The atheists, they said, there is no God. They would have demanded, Noah, give us proof of what you're saying. 
Then we had the agnostics. They didn't know what to believe about God, so they just didn't have any response at all to the message. I'm sure there were those in Noah's day who said, God is just too loving of a God to judge us. Probably just like today, the world then was probably filled with procrastinators who would wait until the last minute and they would build a little dinghy to escape the coming judgment. There were probably some independents who didn't need God's help in Noah's day. Now I'm sure if there were any media, they would have made a kook out of him. They would have called him a religious fanatic. They would have called him a religious nut. They would say he's lost his mind. Noah continued to build though, didn't he? Noah continued to warn. Noah continued to give forth God's message even though there was not a cloud in the sky. Weather report was good. No cause for alarm, the weather forecaster said. The world just continued to go on in its merry way. They wrote no off as a man who was living in the past. Man who was out of touch. You know that's kind of the way many of you this book today. Thing of the past. Irrelevant. Old fashioned. Not applicable to our day. Guess how they feel about those who dare to really preach it. They feel the same way about them. Preacher's irrelevant. He's old fashioned. He's out of touch. He's judgmental. He doesn't understand the God of love. One day Noah finished the ark, didn't he? He understood that that ark was the only way that him and his family would be spared from death. They had to believe God and enter into that ark. <coughs> Noah in his wisdom chose to believe God and he acted on faith. He did exactly what God told him to do. <coughs> many, many, even most in Noah's day, refused to hear the message. Nothing's changed, folks. Most today refuse to hear the message of God's coming judgment and His salvation. Judgment day is approaching. We need to be busy calling men to Christ. Second thing this morning, ladies, Make sure your family is prepared for the coming judgment. Make sure your family is prepared. There probably wasn't a cloud in the sky before it all fell. <coughs> The sun rose that day and on that day at a given moment the word of God came to Moses. The word of God said to Moses today's the day. Load up. Load up. The day of judgment for the world of Noah's day had arrived. But God had made a covenant with Noah. 
It was time for Noah and his family to now step forward in faith. For the hour of grace was coming to a close. Folks, God has already set the borders of time. You and I are living in what's called the church age, the day of grace when the door of the ark is open wide for whosoever will. But the day and the hour is coming when God will seal that door. His grace will no longer be available. And then the rains of judgment will begin to fall. And it's not going to be pretty. On that day, all the wealth in the world will mean nothing. All the entertainment in the world will mean nothing. All of the music, all of the movie theaters, all of the pleasures of the world will mean nothing on that day. Well, the Bible says in that day men will crawl into rocks and say fall on us. They'd rather die than face what's falling on the planet. God's day of judgment. The day of judgment is coming. The hour of grace and ended, and the ark was the only place of safety. And even the heavens above were filled with birds who were making their way to the ark of safety. Animals on the ground were headed for the ark. You know, sometimes animals have more sense than people. Yes, you are correct. Sometimes animals have more sense than people. Ah, oh, the businesses were flourishing on that day. It was commerce as usual. No sign in the sky of a storm of impending doom. Children were playing in the streets. Some folk were getting married. Others were on their honeymoon. Time had run out on God's timetable. This book says time's running out again. Noah and his family moved toward God as that hour approached. God had given them the message. It was time now for them to step into the ark for the rains would soon begin. Folks, I would suggest to you that the rains have already begun this day and age you and I live in. Make sure your family is prepared for the approaching judgment. Judgment day is coming. You and I need to be calling men to Christ. Folks say, I don't have anything to live for. Yes, you do. Mm -hmm. Third and last this morning, safety and security awaits those who obey God. Safety and security awaits those who obey God. And so the day of judgment had arrived. Time had now ticked down to the last day, the last hour, the last minute, and then suddenly the last tick, the last second, as the door of the ark was closed and the judgment began to fall. I wonder how much time the world has left today, folks. Wonder how much time you and I have left. You know, was it Friday morning that Miss Dina got up to go to work and before she left she said, Mike, after we went to bed last night, there was a big shooting 
in Aurora, Colorado. And so when I got up that morning, the first thing I did was flip the TV on to see what was happening. And of course, they had the psychiatrist and the psychologist and the reporters and the journalists were all asking, why did this happen? What would possess a young man in his 20s to commit such wickedness and to commit such evil? And of course, they were all giving their theories. They were all giving their prognosis. And I began to consider the same question as a preacher. And how amazing it is as I considered this question, it didn't take very long at all for two scripture verses to come all over me. As I too wondered, why did this happen? How 